live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back. We're here at VMworld 2019 in the lobby of Moscone North, back in San Francisco, where it all began, 10th year of the Cube covering VMworld. I'm Stu Miniman. My co-host is John Troyer. Spent some time working for VMware. He's been doing the Cube with us now for over three years. It was uh, VMworld that we brought you in the first time. I believe I was working with you on the other side that, yeah. that, that year. Absolutely. And uh, welcoming first back to the program, one of our Cube alumni, Rollinson Rivera, who's the CTO of the Global Field at Cohesity. Thanks for joining us again. My pleasure. Being and here. always excited when we get to talk to uh, a customer, it's a customer and a service provider, Brock Mowry, who's the chief technologist at Woe. Correct, thanks for having me. All right, so we're, we're going to get to Woe in a second because really want to dig in, an interesting name. Um, I'm sure you guys have some, some fun with that, I would hope. Yep. Um, but Rollinson, first of all, you know, VMworld, always a big celebration, back in San Francisco celebration, but 10 years of the Cube too, you know? What, what's it all mean to you? Amazing. The fact that I've been here a couple of times now, it's great, it's a good, good, good great, great way to put a stamp on my, on my existence here at VMworld too. Yeah, uh, you know, amazing ecosystem and lots of, uh, as we said, we just had Jerry Chen on, it's the, the VMware Mafia. I'm sitting here with two former VMware employees too, so um, even when they've left, they're still tight with uh, a, lot, a lot of going on there. Still in the so. heart, still in the heart. All right, uh, Brock, you've been to this event uh, a, a few times. Uh, before we get into Woe, just tell us, you know, what, what, what does VMworld mean to you? So VMworld is uh, obviously, it's a huge networking event. You get to not only see your peers, but also other players in the industries and be able to evaluate their products and see what they have. So. All right, so tell us a little bit about Woe. So Woe.com was uh, founded in 2013. We uh, tout ourselves as a cybersecure cloud platform. Uh, we've done more than just stand up the VMware bits for hosting. We've actually integrated some threat protection and some network defense items uh, around that infrastructure. All right. Uh, Give us a little bit of the breadth, you know, how many locations, sure. locality, all that kind of stuff. So our headquarters is in Hollywood, Florida. Uh, we have a, a data center presence in Miami, a data center presence in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and one in Switch LV in Las Vegas. Uh, so that gives us coverage over the United States. All right, I, I've toured one of those facilities. You've probably They're guessed amazing which one. facilities. So, yep. uh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, can you tell us a little bit about Woe's business? And I'm particularly interested in being a service provider in 2019, right? A lot of noise about the big public clouds, but as the folks here at VMware know, there's trillions of dollars flowing through an IT ecosystem that, uh, you know, some of it's going to the public cloud, but there's lots of need for service providers providing specialty services or, or hands-on services, or I'm kind of curious, what is your business? What, what is your business, and like, how does it intersect with data, which is where we're getting to here? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, with our focus on uh, compliance, uh, that's really one of the major differentiators from us with the the hyperscalers or the the, the big three, as a lot of people like to call them. Um, that gives us the ability also uh, to tune and make sure that their workloads are precise and, and running the way that they want with the security models around them. Uh, plus it's the, the you know, you've got, you can reach out and you can contact us. We, we pick up the phone, we support all of our customers. Uh, we love to go above and beyond and make sure that they're happy. So we want to kind of give them that, that uh, boutique type feel and be able to provide those services out. And we're talking verticals of like yeah, so healthcare is a big one, obviously, um, and then there's you know huge uh, requirements around that for data protection and, and uh, uh, data isolation and so forth, um, and also uh, you know on the cybersecurity side, uh, CyberScan, the new uh, release from these guys, is, is something that we're definitely foaming at the mouth to get at. Uh, it's something that we're we're ready to put into play because it's a, it's a value add back to our customers and having their product in that position gives us an advantage. All right, Rollinson, he teed you up, but uh, you know, in general, uh, you know, we know where Cohesity has played in the enterprise uh, and what's been happening in a lot of the environments. Uh, give us a little bit of the landscape uh, for uh, the service providers and where Cohesity plays. We know that that's uh, you know, been, a, been a great, not only customer, but almost a channel uh, for many technologies in the space for a number of years. Well, you know, we have our own sort of like division within the Cohesity just for the service provider. Uh, 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 market, uh, and what we're doing now is we're enabling them to provide their customers with the value that we give our enterprise uh, customers already. So opening up more than just the backup, right? So one of the things that Brock mentioned is this new capability we have of performing scans, vulnerability scans within the systems. When have you ever been able to do that 
on something that just sits there and it's just uh, an insurance policy in the past. Now we can give you the ability to provide your customers the ability to look into their data, whether they have a vulnerability or not, in place, and tell them before they do it, right? Did you want to restore this? Do you want to protect it with X amount of vulnerabilities? Do you want to fix it before you do it? And that kind of uh, level of service that's being provided, it, it, it just delivers an immense value to customers everywhere. All right, so Brock, is this the first product that you use in Cohesity, or have you been using other Cohesity products? Uh, so we obviously, we, we dove in head first with uh, data protection. Um, our previous uh, data protection product wasn't living up to uh, up to its uh, claims, and that sparked us to go out and start looking at other vendors, and it actually happened at VMworld a few years ago, came across Cohesity, uh, worked with their guys, we did a POC, um, we attacked some of our major pain points right off the bat, and Cohesity handled it without any problems. I'm kind of curious, so we're, we're talking about a Cohesity second, you know, secondary storage platform, it, it, you know, uh, backup is a, is a use of it, but once you, we live in a world now, we don't, we still put some of the things on tape, but okay, the bits are live, they're on a disk somewhere, and I've backed them up. So if, as an example of this, for the security scans, some of this ransomware stuff can lie dormant for, for months before turning on. So it's not a matter of like, oh, I've just restored the backup from last week. You may have to go search through the, all your, 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 your checkpoints, right? So that's an example of how having a secondary storage platform really enables a lot of security. So that's my, my understanding. So Raul, I'm, I'm, maybe I'll, I'll tee you up. Can you talk about data, uh, the secondary storage data platform in general and you know, security is one aspect, data protection is another, I don't know. No, I mean, that, you're on? right. Yeah, uh, the, the thing about the, what we do is that we, as a, as a data management platform, which we're now kind of getting fallen into that, uh, there's many facets to managing dealing with data. We started with the data protection piece. Now we're adding other value to the areas which you just pointed out. There's a lot of dark data that you don't get to see because of the distribution of silos and I don't really use that. Now we have the ability to provide that value that everyone else now in the service provider business can leverage. Because now they have, like you said, I have to go look through all these different iterations of that protection job that I'm doing. Now we do that instantaneously. We do that at the core. So now you're able to identify and report on that and be able to correct it before you have to go through that process, which is, which is incredible. Now, if you, and that's on the data protection side, we also now have the ability of using, you can use Cohesity as a filer if they want to do that. Now we're talking to live information that's being accessed. The same suite of, of capabilities and tools are there and can report the same way. Yeah, if I can add to that too, one of the one of the really cool features that I that I like that Cohesity does is when you're using filer services and things like that, you still have the ability to protect that data as well. So you can replicate those snapshots out to other locations and so forth. So uh, we found that was a, a pretty good benefit for us. We have a configuration management platform that we ended up putting a mount on one of those servers and we want to protect that in our other location and this is our own internal operation so we leverage the Cohesity platform as well. We protect that data by replicating it to another geo. Yeah, Brock, connect the dots for us. We understand you had some pain points but what does this Cohesity solutions that you're using mean for your ultimate end user customers? Uh, confidence. Uh, that's you know knowing that uh, when that backup report comes in and hits their inbox that all of those jobs are going to be successful and ultimately what that turns into is when they need that data back they need to restore it it's going to be there for them. Uh, anything you'd add about the impact on the customers when you're working with service providers? Any kind of broader discussion of the service providers? I mean, it's great, the things that we do, because now we're not only, typically we enable our enterprise customers to do this, now we're enabling our service providers to enable their customers to do that as well. And you know what, we just, we're just in the background. It's their business, right? They're the ones who are providing the service, making a service for, for the customer based on what they need. And it's, it's good for us to kind of enable that and let them do what they need to do, which is make money, make money, protect their money, and make more money. So Brock, I'm, I'm kind of curious, you and your, your customers, right? A lot of talk of digital transformation, agility, we've all, got to make money, we've all got to move fast. And I'm guessing, uh, you know, it, again, in an ecosystem where there are very big players and very small players, part of it, you, you still have to move fast and your customers expect you to be delivering new services and uh, reliable services, et cetera. Can you maybe just, I mean, talk a little bit about kind of what your customers are looking for, uh, you know, how the relationship goes with maybe with a, with a provider like, like uh, you, you have a team in mm -hmm. Cohesity building how you know how fast can you turn on these services? How fast has the ramp up been? Maybe with with uh, sure. Cohesity? So uh, it, it's funny because I've actually been having some other conversations on how we can improve the existing workflow. Uh, but the the workflow has been uh, not. Um, 
we've had to re-architect a couple of network items to be able to uh, to facilitate external backups, for example, because being a service provider, I don't just back up VMs within my environment. I back up VMs in customers' environments as well. Um, so laying the foundation to be able to have these, uh, these units replicate between each other eases that path, and, and again, it comes down to revenue. The faster I can get that box coming in, the faster that I can realize revenue on that product. Yeah, uh, Brock, a lot of discussion in this show about some of the future things. You know, VMware is talking about containerization and building Kubernetes into vSphere, talking about their multi-cloud connectivity that they're having. I know cohesity has got a strong play partnering with all the public cloud environments. Give us a look out as to how, how does that impact your business? Where do you see that going uh, from your roadmap standpoint? Absolutely, so uh, with, with the cohesity platform, especially with the, uh, the big three hyperscalers, for example, we're actually looking at a way to put our long-term storage out on that, uh, out on those services. We'll keep our short-term storage internal or on-prem, wherever the, the, the customer's uh, scenario might be, um, but we want to leverage that, that long-term storage so that we don't have to manage that data over a seven-year period. Um, we do manage it, we leverage your guys' tools to be able to do it, but it's in a hyperscaler, I don't need to worry about it. And to add to that, we're also, as, as VMware moves along and catches on the wave of the Kubernetes and all that stuff, too, we also do that already. So we can actually provide protection of namespaces for, uh, you know, for the for the Kubernetes environment. Some of the things that you'll start seeing, uh, you'll see we release you know, very soon. So we already given the the sort of service providers the ability to compete with the hyperscalers, providing those newer cloud native services that they need to be and have available for them too. So we're going to make that and we're going to enable that for everyone, and they'll have it. They'll be able to offer it, you know, very soon. Yeah. Well, actually, that that brings up a question, Brock. How are, in terms of being cloud native, either you you guys spinning up more services, more cloud native apps, or your customers? And I'm not sure if they're building off the if they're bringing off the shelf apps to you, or if they're building custom apps. I mean, where do you see the evolution of uh, this whole field in terms of DevOps and cloud native? Uh, definitely, so cloud native is, uh, is a very interesting architecture play, uh, especially with the microservices and dynamically building machines on the fly and things like that. It's very, very exciting, very intriguing. Um, our workloads tend to be more traditional VM type workloads. Uh, I have been having conversations with customers, technical groups, hey, you guys should start looking at microservices. This is something that you guys can improve your, guys, uh, your service delivery with. Um, we haven't gotten there yet. We're using some container services internally for our own operations, but externally we're, we're still trying to, you know, part of the digital transformation, work with your customers to provide them solutions. All right. Uh Brock, uh, when, you know, one of the things we come to this show, we always get, okay, great, here's where we are today, here's where we're going tomorrow. You usually have a wish list. You know, we know service providers, yes, if you can make it a little cheaper, you know, we need to be able to pass those margins, uh, you know, down to our customer. What, what's on your wish list? What would make, you know, your company's life easier? <sighs> well, Cohesity's done a very good job of that already. So, uh, again, you know, having confidence in your backups and, and being able to sleep at night is, is definitely huge. Um, so. On my wish list, uh, I, I, I like the direction they're going with the integration and, and uh, a lot of the workbench uh, products and so forth. Honestly, I don't have a ton of wish list. I'm more sitting back watching what these guys are going to come out with because CyberScan's one that, that actually came out of left field for me and I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, what I, I think is interesting about Cohesity's architecture is that there are the, this, this app layer that, they've, that they're now introducing, that, that yes, there's Kubernetes there, and, but it's a lot of apps, data services that are very close to the data. Yeah. I don't know, what do, you, what do you guys have in store? What are you talking about here at the show in terms of, of new services? Because it's now you just containerize it, you dockerize it, and stick it in your thing, and your, 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 your plane, and it, it, it's, they are on the, on the device. Yeah, no, the, the, right now we're, the focus for us is basically continue to deliver value on the platform that people only thought it was data protection. <laughs> right? It's way more than that. Here's, here comes the vulnerability scanner as being one of them but also opening the platform for customers themselves, service providers. You know what you need, you know what services you need to create and develop for, for what you need to do. Do it and put it on us. Do not move the data away from where it's, where it's safely stored and located, bring the application to it. That eliminates risks of you know, data leakage and all these kinds of things. Because now you have a secure centralized location, that's scalable, everything you want, it's all in place. Yeah, I th think it's a great point. I, you know, when the, when the company first came out, it's like, okay, well, here's the product at the day, but Mohit is building a platform. That is his you know, history, and that's how, what he's doing, and I, I know that's what excited a lot of people in the early days, and as you said, your data management platform now, so we, we now actually, uh, or at least at the early stages of where the company is going with the overall solution. M you know, Mohit's very methodical. He decided to go one, way at, one thing at a time, right? We're not a Swiss Army knife. We're not trying to boil the ocean. We come out, we master the one thing that was the most painful so far, data protection. 
we fix backup, and now we're going to give you the rest of what you can get from the platform after we master that. All right, uh, Brock, I want to give you the final words. Uh, you, you've been going through uh, the, this journey now uh, for a few years. Uh, when you talk to your peers, what advice would you give them? Anything you've learned along the way that said, oh, it, it's great, but boy, I wish I could have shortcut certain things or you know, plan something a little bit different. Uh, you know, what, what, what learnings can you share? Uh, so definitely. Plan, plan your uh, deployments. Um, you know, there's there's some new features and new items that are coming out. But you know, again, one of the great things about Cohesity, you have a virtualization a VE series. Go in there and break it on the VE series, and then deploy it on your hardware. All right, <laughs> Brock and Rollinson, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate all the updates, and yep. uh, yeah, congratulations on the progress you've been making. For John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman. Back with lots more coverage at the midpoint of three days wall-to-wall -wall coverage, two sets, tenth year of the Cube at VMworld 2019. Thanks as always for watching.